everybody video here for you today i found an article that just came out a little while ago so i thought i'd share it it's something i have not made a specific video on but it has everything to do with ancient egypt symbolism why certain things were destroyed a long time ago here's an article that just came out this morning why are the noses broken on egyptian statues this essay is an account of truly learning to see what is and what is not present in these objects and here is just one statue coming from ancient egypt with the nose broken off and of course a lot of us are familiar with the sphinx there some people think napoleon's army shot off this nose but that is just kind of a myth it was missing long before napoleon ever got to egypt this what you're looking at here comes from a late period of egyptian history maybe from about 2300 years ago but this is actually a sarcophagus lid this is gray whack you see here I have talked about the noses being missing before. I just thought this was a really good article. This is written by Edward Bleberg, and this is a reprint of an essay he wrote. He works at the Brooklyn Museum. It says, why are the noses broken? This exhibition and essay grew out of my search for an answer to this simple question, which was one of the most common inquiries I received from museum visitors about Brooklyn Museum's extensive Egyptian collection. Here's a defaced statue coming from the 12th dynasty, almost 4,000 years ago. But he talks about looking into the subject a little more deeply and getting a lot of questions. He says, this essay is therefore an account to truly learn to see what is and what is not present in these objects. Its goal is to construct a method for reading the damage in a way that reveals a long history of Egyptian sculpture beyond its original creations and context through changing cultures and beliefs. There are, in fact, discoverable patterns to the damage inflicted on these images in antiquity, and these reflect specific political, religious, personal, and even criminal motivations. These patterns help us establish the date when the damage occurred and the identities of the perpetrators. Here is the Stella of Setu. It comes from the Old Kingdom, the Fifth Dynasty. You can see this defacing was going on way back in history. But Setu here, this was found at Giza in the Western Cemetery here, part of many burials done during the Old Kingdom of Giza. But the Old Dynasty, the Old Kingdom, they were doing inscribing on many different things. Where is the inscriptions on the Great Pyramids supposedly built by the Old Kingdom? Well, nobody can really explain that. But Setu here, who was he? These hieroglyphs are in classic Old Kingdom style. They're pretty simple, and then through history, they just get a little more, a little more complicated. But he was a royal craftsman of the scribes, so he is one who put the hieroglyphs on stellas and monuments. They were doing that in the Old Kingdom, but here, this was found in Giza. I have been studying hieroglyphs for about two years now. And this whole inscription, if I was to try to figure out what this all said, it would probably take, I don't know, maybe a couple hours. Even though I've been doing this for two years, it's still a pretty complicated thing. And if you don't keep at it, well, you kind of lose some, uh, kind of lose some memory of what these all mean and how to put them together. Getting back to this statue, they really don't know who this is. Probably a king coming from the Middle Kingdom, maybe the 12th Dynasty, they, uh, they think. But it just says here, ancient Egyptians were people who created a, a distinctive, stable, and long-lasting civilization in the Nile Valley by at least 4400 BC. They believed that images, objects representing the human form rendered in stone, metal, wood, clay, or even wax could be activated to host a supernatural power this power could be either divine or the soul of the deceased human who had become divine in death. The occupied image was a meeting point between the supernatural and the terrestrial. It was also a physical body enabling such powers to act in our material world. Without an image, supernatural forces cannot intervene in events on earth. And I have talked about the image being portrayed on the burial linens starting in the first century, the soul living on in the afterlife, that is directly connected to something I will be talking about in the near future. Here is Akhenaten, the famous 18th dynasty ruler. Face hacked off here. Also, Aten, the sun god, hacked off here. It says, 
The powers of these images could be activated through rituals and power could also be deactivated through deliberate damage since the activated image was conceived as an earthly body for the supernatural being, the power invested in it could be impaired by striking and damaging specific body parts. Also frequently targeted were royal or divine symbols, harming the inscription and symbols that identified the deity or the individual cut off the source of the image's power by disassociating it from that specific deity or or person. We refer to this type of intentional damage as iconoclasm. Akhenaten is a great example. After his power came to an end and the religion kind of changed in Egypt, a lot of his images were defaced. Also the sun god, Aten, those images were defaced. The priest kind of changed the religious order of Egypt. His city down at Amarna was destroyed also. Here's what they call a Shebti of Akhenaten. There was Many of these found in his tomb. These were defaced. His city was destroyed. The power of Aten was removed. The Aten symbols were defaced. This was quite a time in the 18th dynasty. His son Tutankhamun restored the power of Amun to ancient Egypt. Amun, the ram god, very important in the powerful 18th dynasty. Amenhotep III, one of the most powerful rulers, a variation of his name is Amunhotep. So he is associated with the Ram God. And let me just show you a little clip I recorded down at the Strip last night. Everybody down on the Strip, down at the Luxor, big 38-story pyramid, about seven stories shorter than the Great Pyramid in Egypt. But I believe this is the fourth or fifth tallest pyramid in the world right now. Here is a replica of the Avenue of the Ram Sphinxes at Karnak, down at Karnak. The pharaoh underneath the chin is Amenhotep III, and these rams represent the god Amun. The priests of Amun were very powerful during the 18th dynasty, one of the most powerful dynasties in Egypt. And Amenhotep III, a very powerful pharaoh, kind of joined with the priests of Amun. They were very powerful. And they made this temple down in Karnak. This is what the replica looks like here gods were in this form but there was many different forms many different reasons lion gods even falcon gods in this form anubis of course ram gods meant to re represent the god of moon i just thought i would include that obviously i did not have any drinks on this strip last night just had a nice walk up the strip saw some people i know said hi to dendal but it says here about this inscription, one finely carved relief from this group depicts Akhenaten and his daughter offering a bouquet to the god Aten. It also reveals the range of strategies available to those who wanted to disable the image's power and thus restore the primacy of the god Amun. The king's bouquet was damaged and the Aten was removed to prevent the god from receiving an offering. The king's face and crown were destroyed as were the individual cartouches on the body that contained his name, depriving him of his royal legitimacy, and the hieroglyphs behind the king's head that described the scene were removed. At the same time, though, the minor figure here, the princess, was left intact, and that is his daughter down there below. It says, in addition to this practice, figures other than the king and the Aten were damaged when they constituted independent works. A red quartz head in the Brooklyn Museum's collection displays the downturned mouth of Queen Tai, Akhenaten's mother. The eyes of Queen Tai were originally inlaid in another type of stone or in a precious metal that has now disappeared. The nose was purposely damaged and there was chippings on the cheeks and the back of the head. Image of the queen were made to receive offerings, thus a specific damage to the head of Queen Tai rendered her unable to either recognize offerings by sight or to breathe and thus stay alive. And that's very important when they hack off the nose or the mouth. That is where the air comes in. It kills the image, the soul of the very image that it portrays. Here is the superintendent of granaries during the 5th dynasty, the rule of Nasiri. He had one of those sun temples just north of Abu Sir at Abu Ghraib. It talks about the nose being hacked off. And that is where the breath of life enters the soul so that's why they hacked that off it says the reasons for breaking the nose become even clearer in consideration of the statues 
with multiple subs subsidiary figures. In such cases, only the main figure is attacked while offering bearers or priests are left intact. Superintendent of the granary, Irukapata, and that's who you see here, portrays the deceased sitting on his block like a chair. The entire figure is notably intact except for the careful chiseling away of the nose. On his chair are represented a total of four offering bearers with two females on the back of the block and two males at the right. There are also two soul priests, which would perform the ritual for Irukapata, represented on the left side of his chair. All six figures are intact. There is no damage to them at all. The tomb robbers feared only the revenge of the tomb owner himself, not the subsidiary figures. That's why his nose was hacked off. That's where the soul, that's where the breath of life restores the soul and the afterlife. Here is that block he is sitting on. But that comes from almost 4,500 years ago. They have two pics of this gentleman here, the head of the granaries during the rule in Nasiri, almost 4,500 years ago. This is his family down around his legs here. But it says here, Irukapata's nose has been removed with a chisel and his overall figure is somewhat battered and pitted. Yes, yet his wife and son are completely intact. Here again, the main figure is deactivated while the subsidiary figures remain. The intention is such an instance was to prevent only the tomb owner from acting in this world. Of course, I will leave the link below. Here is another statue broken off the legs. Some hieroglyphs on it. This comes from the Ramses period, about 3,200 years ago. It says additional damage to other body parts, especially the arms or feet, when combined with the knowledge of the image's original location and purpose, can also reveal the date and motivation of what was done. Broken noses kill the statue, while broken arms prevent it from giving or receiving an offering. If the name is intact on the statue, there is strong likelihood that the statue was damaged in the late antique period at the time when Christians still knew how these statues were intended intended to function. There is a statue coming from about 3,200 years ago, the rule of Ramses II, I believe. Here's another statue coming from the New Kingdom, the 18th dynasty, from the rule of Amun-Hotep II. You see here his nose is hacked off. That had specific purpose to these people, and it went way back in time. Once again, I will leave this link below. Anybody interested in ancient Egypt might be interested in reading this. But they also gave warnings for damaging temples or inscriptions. This comes from about 4,000 years ago. This is a decree made in stone. It says, for anyone in this entire land who may do an injurious or evil thing to your statues, offering slabs, chapels, woodwork, or monuments, which are in any temple precincts, or in any temples, my majesty does not permit that their property nor that of their fathers remain with them, nor that they join the spirits in the necropolis, nor that they remain among the living. In this decree, anyone who damages statues placed in the temple by the king's vizier will lose his property and any inheritance he might have and is barred from proper burial and thus contain life after his execution. The severity of the punishment dictated by the king suggests that alarm at the possibility of damage to images reached to the highest level of society. I just thought this was an informative article, so I thought I would upload this while watching some football today. Those Raiders look pretty good. Sorry about that, Kansas City, but that is a good article. I will leave the link below. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.